So this is a brilliant machine learning slash AI application that we have done mm. where the customer is now happy. Every problem has to be addressed in a fashion that the solution has to be very, very dynamic. We ask for all the data and then we started classifying the uh, data and then we started labeling the data. What? But I think the USP that we are bringing to the table is typically like a music directory. Because they know as a silver rule that there is a clear acts of principle, if I have to put it that way, that separates what a service organization can do differently from a product organization. Correct. In the worlds of Chat GPT and Gemini, this is still a bigger problem. Talking about um, one of the medium-sized uh, enterprise clients of ours based in the United States who are into healthcare, you had a long journey with them almost for uh, about 10-11 months now, while at least 80% of the time frame was always, you know, an evaluation for ourselves uh, mm -hmm. with respect to other vendors or other uh, companies against whom they evaluated us in the US. Uh, outside of the data security governance part of it, which they felt is a, is a challenging thing for an offshore company, and we eventually managed to do it outside is a different thing. But outside of those parameters, um, the journey itself was very intriguing. Mm. Uh, you know, not just uh, because of uh, you know the competition that we had, but the the engagement offered a very different set of challenge in terms of processing and things like that. You know, these are like large documents, images and everything. And uh, the simple reason that complexity came from, uh, came in this engagement mostly because the documents or images had no kind of, uh, you know, uh, form or uh, we had no knowledge in what they were actually. Mm -hmm. and, the, and, and even the customer did not have any knowledge on what kind of reports were coming to us for processing actually. Yeah. So this is a brilliant machine learning slash AI application that we have done mm. where the customer is now happy that we have cracked the solution and everything. But tell us a little bit of this journey itself and what are some of the key challenges and outcomes that we deliver to them. I mean, what challenges we experience and the outcomes we deliver. Sure, Vasu. So uh, when uh, the customer approached us, they started by saying that they have like about 40, 50 customers having variety of uh, uh, documents mm. and uh, the structure will vary from uh, each customer to customer and there are variation within one customer too. Yeah. Uh, so overall the thing was that uh, it's going to be very very dynamic there is not going to be any pattern within uh, any of the documents that are to be processed uh, right. That was given to us very very uh, clearly and the customer also said saying that they are also evaluating uh, uh, you know, few uh, right. competitors uh, who play along the uh, same field and uh, that's how they uh, came to us. The first win uh, we got is when we proved to them saying that, hey, there is no one-fit-all solution for your sort of a uh, requirement. Every problem has to be addressed in a fashion that the solution has to be very, very dynamic in way of adapting itself to extract content into Correct. rather than solution being very rigid and ability to process, uh, you know, various type of document. So we sort of reversed it by saying the solution will adapt itself in terms of uh, adapting to the sort of document structure that comes into play. And that's where uh, the uh, it's uh, LBM came into play, large vision model. So what we went about do, uh, doing is that let's employ a vision model and also give the customer the ability to define what is to be extracted from the document rather than the conventional way of reading the document, extracting everything and asking the customer to choose what is that they want to process from there on. Right? In other words, sorry to interrupt again, yeah. you're saying the business contextualization matters or it's extremely important when it comes to AI because there is no one size fits all for anyone right. for that matter. Even in a document processing kind of a scenario, yes. every customer's document processing needs could be different. Very, very and if different. they are trying to employ or deploy AI to do that, yeah. then the, the, the model building itself will differ based on the context. Exactly. Go ahead. 
so when we started employing the vision model uh, into into place they started seeing the result that they were anticipating to right. see uh, right plus added on to it the robust ui that allows the uh, citizen developer to define what is the information that is uh-huh. to be extracted irrespective of the changes in terms of the key value that is available within the document right? everybody anybody can call it anything but belonging to one particular key uh, exactly or uh, patient name can be called as multiple right it can be prescribe uh, it can be member name subscriber name it can even be patient name and so on and so forth how do we handle these varieties with the same model mm. uh, right so we yeah. sort of devised a solution that adapts itself as i was saying uh, earlier that's how we uh, a uh, found a success uh, uh, here and uh, in fact you had written one article about the seven uh, uh, layers, layers uh, uh, right came here <laughs> yeah like so here is a typical uh, example where we had to literally uh, walk through those uh, because since the customer has has their own product but internally the variety of documents that were available it's physically not possible for a person working within the organization to know that there are so many varieties only when once we went in we asked for all the data and then we started classifying the uh, data and then we started labeling the data what we mean by labeling is grouping of uh, data by uh, customer right then we found out okay so many variations in terms of structure so many variation in terms of label uh, that is available within the yard uh, once we understood that then we went into choosing a right model right mm. solution that is going to address this particular uh, requirement from there on going about evaluating the accuracy of uh, uh, data extraction and as we all know like right, currently yeah, yeah. we are entering into the uh, okay. maintenance mode uh, <coughs> uh, type so the important thing to be uh, noted uh, here is that there is no one fit all solution for for any of the ai uh, ml uh, solutions that anybody uh, is looking for point number 2 data is very very key to understand before jumping into it what is the sort of variations that is going to be available and whether the document have to be changed for the model or the model need to adapt for the uh, uh, document the model usually has to do that that's when you you can save time for the uh, uh, end user uh, right uh, applying the same uh, you know 70 30 or 60 40 uh, yeah. uh, rule here so along the way what we w- went about doing was also constantly educating the customer saying that why is that we are different why is that we are doing what we are you are doing and initially there were a lot of resistance also right and no 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 that competitors getting to do like this and they are able to deliver it like this it took time for the customer also to understand saying that the sort of solution we are recommending to them takes them long way in spite of you know adding new customers into the ecosystem or the document itself changing for something you know that has right. already been defined into the system we are accounting for all those changes and uh, the unique challenge out there is you know something called urgency trash mm-hmm. where yeah. you know anywhere it could be written in the document that it has to be processed immediately and it came in three form factors one was handwritten and it's in it could be a check box or it can even be typed within the uh, document right and none of the idp solution can give something out of the box here. correct then you need to understand identify that particular correct. problem and tell the customer say first this is a unique solution correct. we have to develop our own model correct. because there is no nothing available in the market correct. right then we went about explaining that then we developed our own model that has capability to understand you know whether it's handwritten or check box whether it's type and the associated synonymy can be written urgency has many synonyms right defining that into the model and uh, you know uh, making it a success is uh, where we are uh, currently uh. it's a, 
Uh, so thanks, DJ. As a movie buff, I was reminded as you're talking mm-hmm. in the context of uh, you know lyrics and tunes and everything. There is always this thing. The, the lyricist always says, "Yeah, I will write it if you are capable enough. You tune the, mm-hmm. you put the tune according to my lyrics." While the music director will always say. I will give the tune you write the lyrics mm-hmm. about him but truly speaking it's always the former because mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. traditionally lyricist gives the lyrics the music director needs to adapt and then give the tune according to the words they have to fit in and all of that actually I see this very similar in our case right we are we are those lyricists that you know uh, I mean I think the customer is more like the lyricist for us right now not we are not the lyricist the customer is acting like the lyricist that they say here is my context you figure out a way to build a mm-hmm. model where we are in the face of the music director but I think the USP that we are bringing to the table is typically like a music director we are not saying I'm not going to change the tune you better change your lyrics mm-hmm. we are not saying that mm-hmm. Shuchi is one company or Intix as a platform as we do this I think we are saying you throw whatever lyrics you want at me I will make sure that the tune fits into your yeah. lyrics actually I yeah. think that's the beauty of this exercise that we did with Agadia thank you I mean slightly out of context but I thought I, I, I it sort of you know <laughs> no, related no, so it, it, it's uh, as you were saying this um, not many service organizations adaptable product right and it's not like it's it's not like it's a very sentimental thing because they know as a silver rule that there is a clear acts of principle if i have to put it that way that separates what a service organization can do differently from a product organization what we got fortunate about is a for me at this point in time probably the the barrier to entry for enterprises will slowly fade away but for now it is a deeply consultative uh, engagement right. whether you deploy a product or you take that as a service engagement as of now it's a deeply consultative engagement there is no walking away from that Perfect. the example that bj was uh, referring to was something that was brewing in my mind when bj was continuously emphasizing there is no one fit size all problem mm-hmm. i also wanted to pick up when i wanted to present my thoughts on this which is even today with all the noise that we have activating checkbox data mm-hmm. is a difficult problem right mm-hmm. especially if it is coming in a fax where there will be smudges somebody will write on top of the checkbox but put a tick mark saying that it is expired it is it is supposed to be expired finding a way to you know interpret and then activate the checkbox is still a big problem mm-hmm. correct in the worlds of chat gpt and gemini this is still a bigger problem we, let's say for example if people can go ahead and then find a problem agnostic checkbox activation i would really love to see where it is mm-hmm. so uh, i wanted to emphasize on that and there seems to be we got fortunate with the fact that we since we come from a consultative background mm-hmm. so it, it became natural for our uh, our natural team extension. N- natural extension for our team to work with the customer and and take them through this journey where it we had to take up the pain as a as a, as a person who has to listen to the lyricist but also find a way to gently nudge them towards mm-hmm. giving the best it wasn't an, uh, uh, it wasn't a journey that was easy there, yeah. there was I think when you say consultative it is not about always giving wisdom it is yeah. also about having that uh, threshold to you know experience pain right. but knowing for the fact that you would eventually be heard is a, a new definition that I can offer to uh, consultative engagements we wrote a blog saying why do we love head consulting keep me from our team wrote it mm. actually and uh, it was based on or it was inspired by a talk that uh, Steve Jobs gave in gave in MIT i think mm-hmm. Boston Stan- I'm not wrong probably we stand for i'm not sure uh, but he met with a bunch of consultants uh, okay. somewhere in the mid 80s early 90s where he said he doesn't like consultants for the simple reason that they don't take ownership mm. and i think that's where i think i, I this could be a you know bit of a self promotion people can take it whichever way or it could be an over statement or an arrogant statement but i would like to put it on the record saying i look at ourselves i look at shuchi as the making see of artificial intelligence mm. because we do consulting in many places but lot of places lot of people do 
But as far as artificial intelligence goes today, I think not many people have that consultative ability. And I go back to your reference there, which is basically that handholdingness, taking the customer through the journey, walking them inside it, making the deployment successful mm-hmm. and taking them carefully and bringing them out, making sure that the model stays robust, mm-hmm. it stays scalable. Mm-hmm. And that is what consulting to me is all about. Yes. You don't walk out of an engagement saying that I deployed the model, here is yeah. a half million dollars, I charge you and get home. And here is this customer with whom you have spent 11 months just to understand the context and just to guide them, build tailor-made something built for them and things like that. All this to me makes me feel that, you know, we are, you know, in, I would say we are better than McKinsey in terms of artificial intelligence consulting because even a McKinsey would walk out after the deployment. Yeah. Here we are taking all the yeah. pain. Like you said, there is a threshold. We are taking it and then making sure that we don't complain about it. We don't, you know, trip about it. But we are saying, okay, this is what you want. This is what you want more. I'm here to support you and help Absolutely. you get there. Key such as for almost all uh, AI related implementation will be the amount of time the customer is also able to spend uh, spend along with us. If unlike unlike typical IT projects, uh, you know, once you have the requirement document, everybody everything is being specked out that very clearly. So you just have casual stand up call or a review call and finish for a really successful uh, AI implementation. The amount of time the customer also spends absolutely, along absolutely. Uh, uh, with us will become the success for that particular uh, implementation. And that's what we were able to get with the both of uh, these uh, implementations. I think it's a very important point, DJ. But at the same time, um, a lot of viewers or a lot of people who are watching this might be thinking, well, the customer is paying you, the customer wants something and hence he's staying with you and doing yeah. this. But what I'm saying is there is a breaking point. Correct. Not many times the customer is willing to pay, though they would be able to willing to spend time. They don't want to pay to the partner. Actually, they are saying the partner is supposed to do okay. something, show something that is very unique, mm-hmm. show something that is very uh, contextual to me. And uh, I'm willing to support you with all the data that you want. I'm willing to support you with all the information you need and things like that. We respect that. But at the same time, as a partner, I believe not many companies will have that. There is a breaking point for organizations partners and you know companies like us where they will say hey you can support me for two years but you know I don't have the time to just spend with you yeah. right and I think again that's why we are making a difference by spending 11 months 12 months with a customer mm-hmm. we are trying mm-hmm. to say that you know we are not trying to say there is a breaking point I'm done here we are saying okay we'll take it to a place where until you see the success we, we respect the support that you are giving us we respect what you are offering us but at the same time remember that we are building something very specific for you we are doing a lot of things internally we are putting in a lot of effort from ourselves without being complaining saying that you know I need this to be completed in three months or four months or whatever it is until you know you reach that point where you say yes this is what I want Mm -hmm. we are with you actually.